Hello lovers of cardboard and everything plastic. Today I'm going to be painting one of the Y care units from Rune Wars miniature game. Alright, before I get into the actual painting itself, just so you know, this Y car figure is one of 40 for me. So there's a lot of these skeletons I'm going to be painting. So really, if you want to personalize your army in a different way, or if you're just using the techniques and sort of the things that I do for a completely different line or different figure, feel free to do so. This video is pretty general, but it can be used for a lot of different figures and stuff. Alright, let's just get right into the painting. Alright, so the first thing you're going to notice about these miniatures is that they are primed in a silver color. This is plate mail metal from Army Painter. I'm doing this really just to cut down a lot of time. I'm painting, like I said, 40 or so of these miniatures, and I really just want to speed something up. Now, you could, of course, pick a different color. Like, if I really wanted to, I could also have shortened down the time of painting the red cloth by just priming them in red. But I decided to, do, to cut out the armor part. This makes it pretty simple because then the next stage I'm going to shade the armor. This is slightly optional and I'll explain a little bit more why that is a little bit later. Basically I'm going to be mixing an equal amount of Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade. Then I'm just going to spread this all over all the metal bits. So on this particular miniature that's the plate mail itself, the mail skirt, the weapons, just anywhere where there is possibly metal. First thing you're gonna do is use Typhus Corrosion. I'm using an older brush to apply it to the armor, largely because there is some texture inside the paint itself, which if you're using a newer brush, you could potentially ruin it. So just to lessen that factor, I'm using an older brush. And then it's really up to you how much you want to apply this. I'm gonna show you two miniatures here, one where I just apply it all over the place, really thick and heavy, and then another miniature where I just kind of put on sort of a few selective area. You can of course choose a middle ground of the two or just go with whatever style you wish to go with. So the reason why that wash was optional was largely because depending on how you're going to be applying your typhus corrosion then you could just cover the entire miniature and you don't really have to worry about what's seen underneath that. But if you're going to just lightly apply typhus corrosion you might still want to make the rest of the armor look a little bit darker and warm. Next up, we're gonna give it sort of a rust color, and we're gonna use this using Ryza Rust. I'm gonna be dry brushing this on, so I'm using a dry brush, which you can see here. You wanna make sure there's not a lot of paint on the brush left, and then you're just gonna kinda of flick it back and forth across the area you want. You'll notice that the typhus corrosion will pick up the orange and it will kinda of spread around a little bit. If you need to, because Ryza Rust sometimes does get kinda of flaky, you can use your finger to kind of smooth it out a little bit more. Also, it really depends on how heavy you want your rust. If you want one area to be particularly rust, go over it several times with a dry brush. If you just want it to be light, then do it a little bit less. And then I personally wanted my armor to look even more corroded. I'm using the Hilux Oxide to give it sort of an ancient, crusty look. Now you don't want to spread this everywhere. What you really want to do with the Hilux Oxide is just hit the deepest crevices. That might be this bit like on the shield here, or part of the deeper crevices of the armor, or even the deep crevice of the weapons that they're holding. If you do apply too much, just take a slightly damp brush and just kind of soak it back up to get the effect you really want.
And then lastly, to make certain areas look sort of chip, I'm gonna be applying a silver. I'm using the silver color from Army Painter, but of course you could use any silver that you are comfortable using. And just kind of to put some small chips on maybe the weapon here and there, maybe some edge highlights, just to make it look like there's still some shining armor hidden amongst all that rust. And there you have it. That's a quick and easy way to do rust and sort of ancient looking armor. I'm going to be starting with the bone sections and I'll be using Abshati bone just to paint those areas. I keep my paint pretty thin so you're going to have to do about two or three layers if you're going with the same consistency as me. Real quick on this particular miniature, I'm gonna hit the handle of that ax. I'm just gonna use some dryad bark. As for the belt around the waist, I'm gonna be using steel legion drab. I'm also gonna be using this color for the straps on the right arm and the straps around the leggings. Then to cover most of the miniature, I'm gonna be using the Fiston Red to get all of that cloth. I'm gonna hit the wrappings with this color too around the ax. And finally the shield itself, I'm gonna be tackling that with flat earth. There you go, our base coat is complete. I'm gonna do a couple of quick washes along the whole figure. Agrac Earthshade for all the bone areas and the belt and straps, but not the shield because I'm gonna do something a little bit different with the shield. And then you're gonna use Caraborg Crimson for all the red cloth areas. As for the shield, we're actually going to make our own wash using a Vallejo paint called wood grain. This is gonna make the wood on the shield look a little bit more red. And I'm gonna do another secondary wash on the shield itself again, using wood grain mixed with a little bit of smoke. All 
All right, as for the highlights, we're gonna start with the shield first. I'm gonna be mixing a strange concoction of paints here using dark sand and wood grain. Now don't follow me exactly here, I used a little bit too much paint, but what you should do is have about a 90% dark sand to 10% wood grain. And then when you apply this color, really you would be sort of hitting individual grains of wood. This miniature isn't quite detailed enough, so I am just sort of highlighting some big sections of the wood. And finally, to finish the shield off, I'm gonna make one final wash using pure smoke, and I'll apply one layer of that to the shield. And thus we'll have a nice sort of dark red shield. So for the leather area, I just went over the area real quick, sort of with a little bit of steel and drab. I mixed steel and drab with a little bit of ivory to make sort of a highlight color, and then you basically just use this to pick out sort of the edges of the leather. And really in only the places that are super visible on this particular figure. The areas in the back you're not really going to see, at least on this sculpt. Then I'm going to be tackling the red cloth itself. I'm going to first go over quite a bit of area with Mephiston red, just to get a nice pure red color going. I want to leave the areas I find to be probably the darkest. Then for the second highlight, I mixed Mephiston Red with Evil Sun Scarlet. And for this, I'm picking out a little bit more of the detail on this figure. And then finally, the third highlight is just going to be Evil Sun Scarlet. You could, of course, go way more brighter than this and make it pop even more. But again, I am painting 40 of these figures. I do not want to be spending 20 minutes per figure. <laughs> And then finally, I'm going to be tackling the bone itself. For this, I just used pure Screaming Skull. I really wanted that bleached white skeleton look, so I'm picking out a lot of the area of this particular figure. The toes, the knuckles, the top of the head, even sort of the bridge of the nose, etc. For a final highlight for certain areas, I am going to mix that Screaming Skull with a little bit of ivory. I'm really only going to pick out a few areas, so like the brow right above the eyes, the very top of the head, maybe a couple of the toes and a couple of the knuckles, and then finally a big portion of the leg. All right, now just for a couple finishing details. The eyes are a little bit tricky, but what I wanna do here is I'm just dabbing a little bit of white inside the figure just so that the color I use next is actually gonna sort of pop out a little bit more. 
Then I took some Mephiston Red, watered it down, and basically kind of smeared it around in there to give this sort of bright red glowing eye look. And then finally I took a slightly smaller brush, this is a double zero, dabbed a little bit of white on the tip and went straight for the irises. Now the nice thing about this skeleton is that he does in the sculpt have irises picked out. Some sculpts will not and you just kind of have to eyeball it but luckily at least this particular figure they are there. Then I like to have a little bit of fun with some basing. For this particular figure I'm using Dark Earth from Vallejo. I first just kind of smear it across the base really picking out the large areas where I'm not worried about touching the figure that much and then just going to be using the smaller area of my particular tool to kind of pick out right around the edge of the figure, right around the feet, that sort of stuff. And then for now, that's just gonna have to dry. It takes probably about two hours or so to fully dry. Once the figure is fully dry, I'm gonna water down some white glue and just kind of smear it around the figure where I might want to have grass. You can go really light with this or you can just put it everywhere. It's really up to you how you want to do it. I'm gonna have a few patches here and there where the grass might not appear, but for the most part, grass is gonna be everywhere. And I'm using dead grass from Warlord Games. And you're just gonna take the figure and you're just gonna kind of sprinkle the grass onto the glue. You might wanna shake it off a little bit over the container. Some of that grass will fall in. And then of course, once it's dried, you might wanna shake it once more. Some grass will probably also fall off then. I then want even more grass to kind of appear and kind of stand up. So I'm using Wasteland Tuff from Army Painter. And you can pick out anywhere you want some on the figure. I'm gonna use a small bit of grass here and I'm just gonna place it kind of right by behind him. And that does it for how I painted this particular figure. Of course, you can see here, there's a whole larger base and then there's even more figures where you can kind of see the other work I did and just what I did for basing on different figures. And that does it for this painting tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Hi there, I'm assuming if you got through the video, you must have really liked it. And if you did, please remember to like the video itself, leave a comment and hit that big red subscribe button for more content. If you'd like to check out some of my older content, there'll be a link to check out a lot of my older reviews. And also if you're a miniature painter, you can check out some of my miniature painting tutorials. All right, I'll see you next video, bye.